I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots? Or only five? To tell you the truth, I'm pretty bad at counting. But considering this is a nerf blaster in this nerf war, and it only takes one dart to send you all the way back to the spawn, you gotta be asking yourself, do I feel lucky? Well, do ya, punk? Man, all I want to do is revolver ocelot memes, but it doesn't spin without it like getting caught in my finger and probably bouncing off my hand and hitting the concrete floor and shattering into a million tears of a fat man child. God, that's so freaking cool. No, wait, no, hold that thought. You actually most likely won't be able to get your hands on this thing. <laughs> it's kind of a, kind of a one-off. Uh, it's, it, it, well, well, we'll talk about that. So before we get into the heart-wrenching news that you probably won't be able to get your hands on this exact blaster anytime soon, meet the Magpie. This thing is probably the most complex 3D printed thing I've ever gotten my hands on. I mean, yeah, maybe you can't get one, but you know what you can get? This ad from our sponsor, NordVPN. Using the internet can be a terrifying ordeal, but thanks to this video's sponsor, NordVPN, it doesn't have to be. Anytime you are using the internet on your PC or mobile device, you should be using a VPN. Basically, it acts as your filter to the internet. You connect to the VPN, which then encrypts and scrambles all of your precious datas, and then you connect to everything else. That means when that everything else tries to come back at you, they just get the VPN. So, like, advertisers and hackers and other crazy stuff tries to come get you. That's what the VPN catches and protects you from. But the best part about a VPN is how you connect to a server in another country. NordVPN has over 5,200 servers in 59 countries. So you could be like, I'm me here in Washington and connect to someplace elsewhere in the United States. Or why stop there? What about Canada? What about Japan? What about wherever? It doesn't matter if they have a server there, I can connect to it, and suddenly I'm browsing the internet as if I were a local. And NordVPN doesn't log any of your data, so you're browsing the internet pretty much anonymously. And that itself has its own useful applications, like Netflix, because of course, other countries are gonna have licenses for different shows and movies than we have here. So you're actually getting a way better deal if you combine the two. And NordVPN allows you to have six simultaneous connections with unlimited bandwidth. They offer a 30 day money back guarantee and 24 seven customer support. And because of their Black Friday sale, when you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Walcom, that's W-A-L-C-O-M, and you check out using promo code Walcom, again, W-A-L-C-O-M, when purchasing two years, you will get an additional four months free. That's like 10 cents a day for internet peace of mind. I say 3D printed and you can 3D print these. Well, the, the Heath can, you can't. The file, like, that's actually not fair either because you can print out a magpie. It's just the overly complex shell ejecting variety. That's the one that you probably won't be able to do. I'm already getting off topic, but the point is this thing functions almost exactly like a real revolver. Yet it's 3D printed and it fires foam darts out of shells that it also ejects. Money shot! <laughs> Sorry, cat. The Shellington Magpie is a micro flywheel powered blaster with two Merlin motors. So flywheel the world system with flywheel the world motors and wheels. And yet it uh, breaks open and it has spots, chambers, 
for shells because it takes these tiny little shells that serve absolutely no purpose but to be fed into the blaster to look cool after you eject them. These are similar to the shells that are used in the Flypoint pistol, but I don't think they're exactly the same. And uh, you can load them in one by one, all six of them, put them in the chamber and then close it. You open it by squeezing these little levers and you're gonna squeeze them again to close the blaster. And now it is ready to go. It is powered by a 3S LiPo and those Merlin motors screech like banshees. Kitty, you're, you're not gonna want them. Oh, okay, you're cool with it. Anyway, it kind of sounds like that and it does this. I told you. And then after the fact, you squeeze those little levers once again and you give it a nice little flick and it ejects out shells. Most of them sometimes, all of them. That's a technique. When I first got this thing and we'll talk about the history, it ejected them violently. I could probably have tagged somebody by just pointing the blaster out and flinging it open like that. But that version of the blaster didn't really work. So I had to send it back to Heath and he did some changes and sent it back to me. Uh, most notably of which was the whole thing was designed to be left-handed because he's left-handed. Even though everything is, you know, ambidextrous with this blaster, there was something with the trigger pull because it was designed to be left-handed that I couldn't cycle it reliably with my right hand, which was super weird. So uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why you're probably never going to see the files for this exact bird anytime soon. And also while you're probably never going to have one unless you do what I did and shove $100 bills into Mr. Heath Pants' mouth until he agrees to build you one. And even then, I can't tell if he built it for me because he likes me or he pities me. So you could reload the blaster like that, or you can use a mother licking speed loader. Take your little speed loader, put it right in there like that, press it on the plunger, it snaps, and you're completely reloaded and ready to go once again. This is a good moment for some chronograph numbers. I will try to rev up the motors as much as possible, but because these are Merlins on 3S, they spin up at maximum capacity pretty much instantly. So you don't exactly have to really rev it up to fire it. You're gonna get pretty much the same velocity if you just pull the trigger regardless, which man, how far technology has come. 134. 128. 134 again, 135, and 139, there we go. So not world shattering, but definitely impressive and usable. You know, besides the fact that it uses shells. Found it a lot more reliable if you actually just kind of do that. Yeah, that works every single time. So although you would like to use it one-handed, it's not really meant for it. Besides, you gotta load it anyway, so you might as well just break it like that. Speed load, put it back, good to go. Surprisingly usable. There is also moon clips for it, but as you can kind of see, it uh, it has some issues. Uh, these do fit and chamber in the blaster. Surprisingly enough, you can't actually use it. Yeah, it, it doesn't like it. That was good. But it, it's it's not gonna eject. It it just can't. Which is uh I guess not the worst thing ever. These were I don't know how exactly Heath is going to actually make this work. It's not like it's a product that demands it to be happening. I'm guessing that the moon clips themselves can't be 3D printed and that will have to be like spring steel or something like that to actually work in this blaster, but at least it's a cool idea. Of course, the awesome way of loading your magpie is going to be from some kind of cartridge belt or something, because if you're already gonna use something like this, you might as well go all the way. Should probably mention that this thing is double action only. It does have a hammer and the hammer will drive the entire system. You can fan the hammer. Watch as I put my thumb on the hammer and pull it back slowly. Ah! It fires. I mean, it works. Uh, I I need some practice in that. And honestly, I'm scared of breaking this thing because it cost me a lot of money and it is needlessly complex. So that's some of the semi-interesting bits. Let's go to the range and see what it does at range. And then we'll get into the actual boring part of the conversation. All right, kind of excited to see how this performs. 
because I haven't actually range tested it yet. I'm assuming the accuracy won't be that good, but maybe I'll be surprised by that as well. So I got a little bit of a hang up right there, but that was still respectable. Let's uh, get a shell break. Gotta do the reloads on camera. That's half the fun with this thing. Ready to go. So I'm not even giving it that much of a chance to warm up and it's still doing fairly competently. This last one, I'm gonna just try to dump the cylinder as fast as possible because that's also important for a blaster like this. So even with me just basically pulling the trigger as fast as possible, it still basically hit the same range. And that's because the Merlin motors spin up so freakishly fast now, if I did want to charge it a little bit before each shot, I could get a bit more distance, but that is definitely usable. Most of those shots were clearing rival range and I wasn't even putting that much of an angle on it. It's high noon. So honestly, perfectly usable, absolutely awesome. An amazing, amazing toy. A functional piece of art. You can take this to a war and use it, and it will actually be competent. It will be something that somebody will have to worry about. After six shots, you'll have to reload, and then after the match, you'll have to pick up all your shells, and that's not exactly the most optimal way of flinging foam, but you didn't pick something like this because you wanted to be highly efficient and optimized. You, you picked it up because you wanted to have fun and also have a chance when using such fun. So besides the hardware and the flywheels and the motor and stuff like that, the springs, it's all 3D printed. But this one does have an aftermarket upgrade, being the second revolver in existence that Heath has made that is like this, and that is laser cut nylon parts for the actual trigger sear, because those tend to break. Typically when you the files for the magpie or that cool Vash the Stampede pistol, I mean, I'm sure that's what led to this actually being a thing. You typically wanna use Pet G for those pieces because they have to have some good flexibility, but also a good amount of durability. That still doesn't mean they last forever though. And that's kind of the problems that people have had with building the Magpie. Not only is it stupidly complex, but it's pretty much to the breaking point of what 3D printing is capable of because obviously this has basically everything it needs to be an analog of an actual firearm. And that's the genius of this blaster. It is fun. It is probably some of the most fun I have ever had with any foam flinging device in the hobby. Really, my only complaints were because everything is so handmade, I mean, it's all 3D printed, obviously, but you have to hand fit and file parts just to get them to work in this thing regardless. It uh, has a lot of weird gaps on it that I tried to kind of fill in by tacking them with just a little dot of super glue and kind of keeping it together so it looks somewhat cohesive. Really, my main complaint, it's a small one, but it's massive. The way the trigger is designed, for some reason, it's a little bit too far proud forward and it has some slack right there that you can take up. And with the trigger like that, I can't spin this thing. Now, if the trigger would rest slightly farther back, maybe there's like a little piece or something in there that stopped it from pushing forward that extra little bit under spring pressure, I could spin it. And then it would be a 12 out of 10. It'd be the best thing ever, but uh, I can't do that, so I'm slightly upset. Now, it should be noted that the grip on this is not the standard Magpie grip, and that is because this one, designed by Adrian for the original Magpie, would bolt right onto the shell Magpie, because the back end is essentially the same between the two revolvers, and I wanted this one because it looked cute. And the battery is located in the grip. You simply remove one pin, that piece bounces off and lands underneath the shelving unit, and there's a battery in there. And this is one of those 950 milliamp hour batteries that out of dart cells. And every single time I put it in here, I'm worried I'm gonna break something because I really have to force it down in there. But nothing's exploded yet, so I think we're good. So do I recommend spending hundreds of dollars to hopefully coax Mr. Heath Pants into building you one of these things? Not really. I mean, I had to have it, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. And that's pretty much all I got for you. So I hope 
you enjoyed this video. It costs a lot of money, and uh, I really hope you left a like and hit the subscribe button, left a comment down below, shared it with your family and friends. Maybe they'll like a stupid fat guy holding a stupidly expensive 3D printed work of art that also shoots foam darts. I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. And thanks again, NordVPN, for sponsoring this. Otherwise, stuff like this just wouldn't happen at all. Spore! Ah, ah, ah! What do you think, Tyga? Is he done? Ah! He's done. He's done three times in a row. Wow, I really suck at skydiving.